and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee, and I'm an independent demonstrator in the U.S., and excited that you're joining me today in my Creatively Your Studio for a little bit of paper crafting fun. Yay! So what do I have in store for you today? We're going to do something a little different. So normally I do cards, but today I have a really cute um, gift box. So um you know, if you're looking for stocking stuffers or if you like to decorate your um, holiday packaging with a cute little tag, this might be a little uh, nice item for you. Um, it would make a great gift for coworkers or um, I think a little stocking stuffer as well. So let me show you real quick. So here's the box here and then you untie it and it's going to reveal four super cute cards little tag cards. So um, we'll show you more of that in just a moment. So I am featuring the Sweet Stockings 12 by 12 paper and a couple different stamp sets, and we'll show you that as well. Are you guys ready to get started? Let's do it. All right, I'm going to switch the camera over. All righty, let me check this setting right here. Perfect. All right. Now, hopefully my computer has decided to turn on so that I can see your comments. It decided to do some updates real quick right when I was going live. Gotta love that when that happens, right? So we'll see if we can get this pulled up. So while this is coming up, let me go ahead and show you. So as I mentioned, we're featuring the Sweet Stockings 12 by 12 Designer Series Paper Pack. Um, it's full of great prints, cute little critters on it and some fun color coordination there with basic black bumblebee, cherry cobbler, cinnamon cider, evening evergreen, old olive, and cool party. So some good ones there, right? Um, and there is a coordinating stamp set and die um, bundle that goes with this paper or coordinates with this paper, but I'm not actually using that today. I am letting the designer paper really kind of speak for itself. So we're using it as our design element. And then I brought in two uh, stamp sets. Now, you really can use whatever holiday stamp sets that you like. The reason I chose these is I chose this No Man Season because I wanted that two from. So any stamp set that you've got that has a two from, that works fabulously and you will be just fine, right? So you can, of course, pull in this super cute stamp set if you've got it or add it to your list if you don't. Um, I like it, but uh, you know, if you've got another two from, my point being, you can use whatever you want to. And you don't even have to put the two from on there. I just think it's kind of nice. And then I'm also bringing in the Peaceful Deer um, because I wanted to use one of the sentiments from that because I think that that is a really nice holiday sentiment and it's not too long for the space that I'm dealing with. And of course, you could use some of the other elements in here as well if you prefer. But I'm just going to pull in a sentiment. So let's pull back in this gift box. And let me show it to you again. So you can see all of the fabulous details of it. Let's see, am I in the right place? And am I live? Not seeing comments yet. We'll see if my computer will come up. It doesn't look like it is. Hopefully I'm in the right place. Hmm. All right, if you guys can see me, let me know. All right, so I am going to untie this. So this just ties closed. Got a little texture going on there, some layers. I'm gonna untie this. And this is where you're gonna see where I've added that sentiment. Now you could add a little more decoration to the inside of your box. I kept it um, pretty simple. Oh, there I am, good, good, good. Hey, Jean. Hey, Jennifer. Thank you guys for the birthday wishes. So yes, today is my birthday. And um, so this is why I decided to do a little gifty. So, you know, on your birthday, you got gifts coming. So while this is Christmas related, it's still gifty. You could still use it. But we are going to make these adorable, adorable little tags. So on the back is my two from that I talked about. And then we've got four little tags in this gift box. Aren't those cute? I love it. I love that you can totally cut right out of the designer series paper and get your elements and you don't even have to stamp them. Now, of course, like I said, this um, designer paper coordinates wonderfully with a stamp and die bundle that's in our mini catalog. 
that would look great as well that you could stamp and color. But I found this a little bit quicker and I like to use those little elements. So let's start off by showing you how to create this box. All right. So let me slide these out of my way and I pull in my Simply Score because I think it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. You could do this on your paper trimmer if you prefer, but I like doing it on my Simply Score. So we're going to start with the outside of the box, the cover, as you as I will here. And of course, at the end, I will go back and add in the complete supply list. So if you need to order any supplies, you've got the links to do so right there, as well as all the cut dimensions. So you can recreate this one on your own. Now, this project is one that we created um, that I taught for the North Carolina Demonstrators um, quarterly meeting back in October. So we're gonna score this. So this is six and a quarter uh, by five and a half, I believe. And I'm gonna score this at two and a half. I'm gonna rotate it and score it at two and a half again. Now, could I have scored it at three and three quarters instead of going in at two and a half again? Sure, I could have. I just like to make sure my front and back panels are the same. So we'll just fold that right along that score line. And this is gonna create our outside of our box. Let's go ahead and score and prep our inside pocket as well. Now this piece is seven and a quarter by four and a half. Now I misscored it the first time. So this was actually some scrap paper that I had left, but I'm gonna use it. Why not? Let's go ahead and just use it. So we're gonna score it three eighths, one and five eighths, three and seven eighths. And I ran out of little markers and five and an eighth. So we'll see if I can remember that by the time I actually score it. Okay, so three eighths, one and five eighths. Let me double check that. Three and seven eighths, yes. And five and one eighth. So ignore my bad score lines and just go by my new score lines, right? And then I'm going to rotate this and score it along the bottom at one and a quarter. So let's move these out of our way because I would surely score this wrong if I don't change my markers, right? So we're going to score this bottom at one and a quarter. Perfect. So let's move this out of our way as well. All righty. So this one's going to take a little bit of clipping, but let me go ahead and fold it along these score lines. Make sure that I don't do the wrong score lines, right? The ones that I made the mistake of earlier. I tried to uh, run my bone folder to flatten them so you wouldn't see them. Hopefully this will still turn out really cute, even though I scored it originally incorrectly, <laughs> right? All right, so there's my basic box, and this is the bottom. So hopefully my mistakes in there aren't causing too much confusion. So we will be able to see, normally I would put my tab in the back, but because I have my mistakes of score lines, I think I'm going to put it in the front. I don't normally do that, but I'm going to because, like I said, I made some mistakes here. All right, let's go ahead and clip the bottom. Just right along each of those score lines, I'm going to clip this bottom. And then this one I can actually cut away. This is my little closure tab, and I'm going to angle cut those. Now, these little side tabs, I'm gonna go ahead and angle those tabs a little bit as well. Just miter those off a little. That up there. You don't have to do this, but I kind of like getting some of those points off if, if I can. Okay, so I'm gonna add some tear and tape. It's been a while since I've put this box together. Like I said, I created it for our North Carolina demonstrators group back in an event that we did in October. I love, as demonstrators, we get to do fun events together. It's a good time. All right, so this is going to close with this tab here. And then we want to fold in our two side tabs and then the bottom is gonna close on the top of that. And then this one will close on top of that. So I'm gonna flip this over. I kind of walking myself through that, right? So that's gonna connect me to those tabs. And then this is going to connect me to close that last one. Uh, I don't know that I need it, but I'm going to go ahead and put a second strip here. 
And hopefully I didn't do this wrong. I might have, we'll find out. All right, let's run our bone folder along this. If I made a big mess, I made a big mess, right? We'll figure it out as we go. Well, poop. All right, got my backing paper off there. And I'm just gonna fold that and that should line up flat. I've got my score lines in the right places. Get that a nice big piece. All right, so that creates my box sides. I'm gonna fold in my side flaps and then let's go ahead and peel the backing off of this long tab here. I'm gonna fold the back up first. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the front one and it's gonna be last. That way I get a nice pretty edge on the front of the box. Now, what I could have done and didn't, I forgot, was to put some tear and tape on the back of the box so that this would be easy to adhere um, to our outside of box, but I didn't do it. I forgot to do it. So that's okay, we're gonna make this work. So I've got this, this is where my tags are gonna go. And we're gonna adhere this right inside our box base. So let me bring this in. I'm gonna go ahead and run my bone folder along these creases as well in the outer box. And then we're just gonna adhere this right inside here. Now I did it just in front of that score line there because I don't want it to fight it. And you can come up a little bit if you'd like, um, or you can put it right down at the bottom. I'm gonna come up a little bit so I have kind of a space on the two sides here. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna use some liquid glue since I forgot to use tear and tape and it would be difficult to put it on here at this point. So this is gonna take a moment to dry, that's okay. That might be excessive, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so again, I'm gonna to try to make sure that I'm up or over from that edge a little bit because I want that to be able to close. And I want it to be a little up from the bottom and a little over from that edge there. So let's just get that a little push. And then I'm gonna set this aside to dry for just a moment. Let's go ahead and stamp our inside layer. So I've got my basic white layer and let's bring in our cherry cobbler ink. Mine's a little bit messy. And you know what? Let's see if I've got a foam pad handy. Yep. Since I'm dealing with a photopolymer stamp, if you have any issues getting good stamped images, bring in a foam pad. Our Pierce mat works fabulous, but if you've got a stamparatus, you could use the foam in it as well. Let's see if I can get this straight, maybe. I'll take it, right? Oh yeah, this would be so cute as a Valentine treat box. I agree with you, Jennifer. Little love notes in there. You could use them for tags, little treats. Oh yeah, cherry cobbler is always messy for some reason. Yes, I agree, Janet. My cherry cobbler is always messy. I think it may be me, <laughs> but yes, cherry cobbler can be a little bit messy of a pad. All right, so let's go ahead and add some stamp and seal to the back of this. We're going to tear this down in place. Now, again, I mentioned, I think, that you could have decorated the inside of this a little bit more. You, know, you could have added some layers. You could have added some fun uh, designer paper to the box part here. Um, I think that that would be very, very fun. But um, I just didn't go there. I wanted to leave it pretty simple. So that's really my base. I just need to decorate the outside and make my tags. So before we, let's see, before we go too far, let me go ahead and start the outside decoration here but I don't wanna finish it because my ribbon is gonna slide under and it's easier to tie once with all my tags inside, right? It gives me a little bit more stability. So let's bring in another piece of basic white. It is the exact same size as the piece on the inside. And then I've got a piece of pool party that's gonna layer right over the top. You guys know I love those eighth inch, or, uh, eighth inch differences in my sizes. And what I mean by that is if I line them up in the corner, look, well, I'm not very accurate here, but it's about an eighth of an inch uh, spacing there. So when I spread it out, it gives me a nice 16th inch border. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. Now I added texture, I already did that with the um, 
These are the wintry embossing folders, and I use this little pine, if we can see that. There's a little snowflake one, and then there's kind of a pine bough. And so that's what I've used to add that great texture to there. All right, let me go ahead and adhere these together. So I'm just gonna run a little stamp and seal on the back of this. Now, sometimes the stamp and seal will rip your paper when you're dealing with an embossed layer. It's okay, if you have trouble, you can always um, switch and put your adhesive on the, the piece you're gluing it to. I just don't like to do that because I tend to go a little crazy with my adhesive and get it messy out. Messy too far out. Yes, that's what I meant to say. So today is the last day of November and my birthday. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. I appreciate it. Um, and I wanted to let you guys know, this is also, since it's the last day of November, it means this is the last day to take advantage of the $75 starter kit special. I can't believe it. You get $125 in product for $75. It's such a great deal. So if you're not a demonstrator already, might be something to consider, right? All right, let's go ahead and make our tags and then we'll switch back to the outside decoration in just a moment. So let's bring in, oh no, what did I do with it? There it is. All right, so I've got my four strips of basic white cardstock and let's go ahead and punch these first. So I'm using the, I think this is called the ornate tag topper punch. I didn't write it down. Let's see, maybe I have it on my cheat list. Nope, I didn't put it down. It's in the supply list. I, I will make sure you have it. I think it's called ornate, but it is a tag topper punch. And if you wanna flip it over and look at the back, you can. I find if I've got it in this channel, I do pretty good with it. And I'm just gonna lean on it and it's gonna give me this cute decorative top and give me a hole, which is awesome. So this is a great, fast and easy way to make tags. And you can make them any length you want. It's two inches wide is what I've chosen to do. But you know, this is a, this has channels for different widths. You can go wider, you can go narrower. It changes the appearance of the top just a smidge. Perfect. And just like all of our punches, it folds flat and you can lock it. So it takes up less storage space on your desk, which is nice. Okay, now I'm gonna bring my foam pad back in and I'm gonna do my stamping and my two from. And the reason I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it before I decorate it is because if I mess it up, I can flip it over. Yeah, right? So when you mess up your stamping, there's two sides to everything and I can hide it if I need to. Oh, hiding. I've hidden my cherry cobbler. You know why my cherry cobbler is so messy? Look at that. It's because I was doing some water covering with it not too long ago, and I didn't do a good job of cleaning up my pad. You guys do that too? Uh, I am not doing forget me not today. So I am playing birthday hooky. So for those of you that are in my card club, we will not have a Facebook Live this evening. So I go live every Tuesday evening for my forget me not group and we do one of our club cards. So I don't know if you noticed the cards that were hanging behind me, you probably couldn't even see them, but I just finished designing, I know I'm a little late, um, just finished designing the four cards for club and I'm gonna work on Paper Pumpkin, the Paper Pumpkin alternate next because my club members that are also Paper Pumpkin subscribers get a bonus card for free, which is awesome, yes? So, so yes, I'm playing birthday hooky tonight and I'm not doing our, our club Facebook Live. I do have a reminder set up that we'll post in the group. All right, so here are my four fabulous cards and my stamping turned out good. So I'm just gonna flip them over and decorate the other side. So I've chosen four different patterns from the designer series paper pack, right? Let's bring those tags in again so you can see them. It's always nice to have a little cheat, right? While we work on these. So you can kind of see those. And then I've got four little half inch strips of old, uh, of two old olive and two cherry cobbler. Now you could do your width of these strips however you wanted to do it. I just thought it added a nice little touch of color. So I'm just gonna adhere these down. You can use stamp and seal. You can use liquid glue, whatever makes you happy. And I'm gonna leave just a little white strip at the bottom here on each one of these. 
the salmon seal is about ready to run out. So we'll see if we make it through our project without me running out of seal. You knew it happens. I can see that red tape coming. So I know, don't think I have too many, too many uh, swipes left. There we go. All right. So yeah, if you guys have questions on um, joining my team and taking advantage of the starter kit special, um, or if you've got questions about joining my club, let me know. I'm happy to answer any of those that you might have. We create some really awesome projects every month. In both, actually, for my team as well as my club members. So these are just two by two um, inch little pieces of the designer paper. Oh, almost to the end there, it's fighting me a little bit. I think I'm gonna go a little skinnier on that cobbler. So you can cover as much or as little of that cardstock strip, but it adds a nice touch, I think. All right, got this one. Oh, it's fighting me. It doesn't want to come out because it's almost at the end. There's something about a brand new adhesive, right? So much easier to use. Cute. One more. Will I make it? No. All right, I'm out. Totally out. So we're going to have to switch to liquid glue, which is not my favorite to use for something like this, but that's okay. I can also run across the room if it makes me too crazy. I might have to. All right. Looks like I got a little feathering from my, my trimmer. My, my blade is a little dull. I need to find a new one. All right. So those are the base of my tags. Cute already, right? And then we're just going to fussy cut out some of these critters from the paper and add those to the front. So let's see where I put my little pile of critters. I've buried them alive. Oh no, seriously, I did. I buried them, I can't find them. That's not good. There they are, I found them. Okay, so three of them I've already fussy cut out, but I'm going to do one with you. So I'm gonna choose this guy right here and just go ahead and cut this out. And again, you can go super close and cut off all the white space or as much of the white space as you want, or you can leave a little more white space. Sometimes I'm a little more even, depending on my hand, how steady my hand is. Now, I know the back end of him is gonna get cut off, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And let's see if we can come in here. This might be one I'll have to come back in and. Oh, I'm cutting off his belly. Oops. Well, nobody knows what it's supposed to look like. That's the good thing, right? So nobody knows if you cut off his belly. Her belly, whichever. That's the little guy here. All right, not too bad. And when I lay this down, I'm just gonna cut off the excess. So let me go ahead and get cut down in here to this foot a little bit, because I think I'll end up having that in the end based on my original. And maybe this will be important to cut this little piece out here. And we'll just cut along here just in case I need it. Not bad, not the best cutting I've done, but super cute either way. All right, so let's go ahead and pull out some dimensionals. If I can find them. Yes, I have them. Perfect. Got to have something with dimensionals on it, right? I think it adds uh, super cuteness to it. Popping these up. All right, we'll see how that works. And I'm going to pull it on this one here. Love it. I think I'm going to move him up a bit, have him break that white space a little bit. It doesn't look so planned out, maybe. Cute. 
And I'm just gonna flip it over and use the tag as a guide to trim away that edge. So even if your image is bigger than what you're doing, you can just clip them off and he fits just fine. Cute, 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 cute. All right, let's take the kitty with an attitude. Cracks me up, just cracks me up. And we'll put that one on and let's have the tail hang down just a bit and the antlers hang up. Hang up, that doesn't make any sense, but you know, you know what I mean, sticking up. <laughs> All right, let's put this cute little doggy right here on this one. Again, I'm gonna have his ears peeking out the top here. Cute, and then this kitty's gonna go at an angle. And it can hang off, I mean, these are tags. So I think it's just fine. So cute. All right, so let's add our decoration to the tops of our tags. So it takes about, um, I'm gonna say about four and a half inches or so of this cherry cobbler ribbon. Um, you can do as little or as much as you want. I'm gonna fold those through. Okay, so let's do that on each of those. And it, this ribbon frays really super easy, which I think is kind of cool. Some people like that, some people don't like that. It, you just need to be aware of it, right? I think it's fine, you could totally fray it out. But I'm just sliding it through the hole and then angle cutting both of those. We'll go ahead and do all four of them if I've got enough in this piece. And if I don't, I've got some more scraps that I can pull in. Hopefully I'm in camera and you guys can see me though. Oh yeah, you love club and you love bingo too. Yeah, we have bingo coming up. Registration just closed for bingo. So I've got everything on order and actually it should arrive any moments. Well, probably in the next couple of days. Hopefully packets will go out by Friday. I ran out of card stock, so I had to order more. I'm excited about the bingo. We do that every quarter. We do a bingo. All right, so I've got those. And then I'm going to bring in some of the gold cord from the elegantly, wait, elegantly, elegantly said, I think is the name of it. Mm, the elegant trim. That's what I'm going to call it. And I'm going to tie a bow around this. So it's about eight and a half ish inches to do this, it, I think it really depends on your fingers, right? And how much you need, but I'm just gonna, I tied that once and then we're gonna take our little loops here. And this is kind of a small little thing to work with. And of course my bows end up upside down. So I like to actually tie it upside down. And then you'll just clip away what you don't need, right? So cute. All right, let's bring in another one. We'll just keep going until we get all four of these done. And then we can slide these in our box and then finish our decoration on the outside. So this is a little more than I normally do in a Facebook Live. We usually try to keep it within 30 minutes. I'm sure that I'm going to go over today. But that's all right. Hopefully you guys don't get bored with me. Oh, yay, Jennifer, you've got a pre-order coming today. Yeah, that's one of the super cool things about being a demonstrator is that we get to order stuff early. And, you know, we have a new catalog coming out in January. We have, um, which means our current mini catalog, the products are going to be retiring soon. So I'll have the last chance list. Um, it's available to me to pull. I just need to pull it and get it posted. So it's on my list of things to do. I don't know if I'll get it posted today or tomorrow, but it will post. So you guys will be able to see um, what is going away. I'm, I'm telling you this paper and this ribbon, this designer paper and this ribbon is on the list. So if you love it, you definitely want to order it. Some things are discounted. I don't believe either of these are but some things are discounted on the list, but not much, you know? Um, but there'll be some things you definitely, if you've been eyeballing them, you definitely wanna get them before they're gone. 
things tend to sell out pretty quickly. Cute. One more to tie. And then we're ready to slide our tags in. So yeah, so demonstrator starting uh, tomorrow, actually. Um, some of us got to pre-order out of the new catalog as part of um, our on-stage attendance. So that was a, a Stampin' Up! event that we attended, an online virtual event. It was really fun. And then, um, but the rest of the demo, like the entire demonstrator base is going to be able to pre-order out of the mini catalog tomorrow. So today would be a great day to take advantage of the $75 starter kit deal. And then tomorrow you can place an order and put all kinds of great new things on your supplies, all your crafting supplies and get them at a discount, which is awesome. And we earn, we earn celebration rewards one extra month. So we'll have celebration starting in January. It'll be January and February. For those of you that don't know about celebration, celebration is when we have um, some exclusive products out of a special little mini catalog that you can earn for free when you place a $50 or more order. So awesome. So our tags fit right down into that cute little spot there. So you can see these could be longer. Your ribbon could stick out the top even if you wanted it to, but I could have left the ribbons a little bit longer. I could have made the tags a little bit longer. But so cute. All right. Now let's go ahead and decorate the outside of this. I'm going to just tuck that little cord in. I got a little rogue on my cord. And I'm going to pull in one of my favorites. So we are going to, I cut, I went ahead and die cut this. So this piece here was made with this. This is from the Give It a Whirl die. So this is a nice big die set. I am finding that I am using these elements a lot but it cuts out that shape with the circle cut out in the middle. So I thought I might as well take advantage of that, right? So I'm gonna adhere just the outer ring down first. Oh good, you like the tags? Yeah, they are elegant. I think, you know, you look at that paper and you look at those image and images and you don't really think elegant, or at least I didn't, but um, I, they're so pretty. I think the color combination and that ribbon, I think the ribbon and the cord combo makes just makes the tags so you can add those on your gifts this year how special would that be love it love it love it love it all right so i'm gluing the ring on now i'm going to pull in my ribbon and you want about 19 inches or so i'm not going to cut mine off i'm going to just tie it right on the box so i can pull off as much ribbon as i want and I'm gonna tie a nice big bow. I think I'm going way over 19 inches, but I don't care. I want a nice, nice big bow. So let's see if I can make my loops here with it connected. Sometimes my fingers don't cooperate. Well, arthritis, get, whoops, getting to that age. My arthritis beats me some days. All right. There we go, I think I got it. Okay. Once I get it kind of the length I want, I can snip that off and I'll have a little bit more leeway. Ooh, my fingers just aren't cooperating today. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clip that off, maybe down there. And then I can kind of play with this a little bit. Slide this down just a smidge. So I can tighten that. Cute, right? So you can have it centered, or I'm actually gonna slide it a little bit so it's a little bit more forward where my bow is. So I see it a little bit more on the side. Isn't that fun? And it can be a nice big bow. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. That's what I love. All right, we're gonna adhere this circle right on top, but of course I want to pop it up. And I wanna make sure I'm gonna catch my ribbon so that it holds my ribbon so it doesn't fall out when I am tying and untying this. So I'm gonna put, I think I'll put four of them on there. This might be a little bit excessive, that's okay. And then we're just gonna add this little circle popped up. Might as well take advantage of the fact that it cuts that out for me. Now, let's see, I'm gonna use a bone folder to slide in there and give me something to give a little pressure 
as I push this down. Now, could we have decorated this before we uh, assembled that inside so that I could have had this flat? Sure, we could have, definitely could have done that. I just like to do it when I'm tying my bow and it's all pretty and I can, when I'm done, it's gonna stay all pretty because I'm not gonna untie it until I have to, <laughs> right? All right, so now I've got a stocking that I snipped out of the designer paper as well to put on the front. You could use any of the little images you want to. And I'm gonna pop this up as well. And I'm excessive on my dimensionals here, but you know, since I'm popping up, I might as well do lots of it, right? Get that little pop up. Cute, 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 cute. And so each one is gonna be unique depending on what your choices are. So that one, I left the little hanger loop on when I cut that one out, different stocking. So it looks cute with the little short squatty stockings or the long skinny stockings. And there's all kinds of different patterns on them. And then you've got your inside with your sentiment. And of course you could change that up a little bit. Whoops. And then you've got your cute little tags that fit right down in. So yeah. Cute, right? How, could you use this as a gift? I think so, right? I think it'd be a fun gift. Or you can just, um, you could skip the box, use it for something else, um, put candy in it, candy canes or something, and then you put all these little tags on your gift packages. So fun, right? I love it, love it, love it, love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll give it a try, yes? Good, let's see, questions? Oh, good. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Yay. All right. Perfect. 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 So I will update the video description to have all your product links and your cut dimensions. So you have everything that you need. All right. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to share this with your crafty friends if you're enjoying uh, the projects that I'm sharing. And uh, if you're watching on the replay on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right. Thanks so much, and I hope to see each and every one of you again next Tuesday for a little more paper crafting fun. All right, bye for now.